What it do, chooms? Welcome to Space JB. I'm your host, Space, and thank y'all for clicking this video. Cyberpunk 2077 is jam packed, hell, practically overloaded with legendary characters from all walks of life. Rippers, mercs, CEOs, and even AIs can become well known or legends in a place like Night City. In the universe of Cyberpunk 2077, technological breakthroughs has allowed the world to experience the internet in three dimensions. Hackers, coders, engineers, even your regular old Joes can become like gods to some and devils to others. Yet, when mentioning Legends of the Net, there isn't many names, well, maybe one or two, if any, that could top that of Raish Bartmoss. Now all you cybernauts know that Papa Space loves to sink my mantis blades deep into the cyberpunk lore as I try to satisfy my seemingly endless thirst for theorizing. While I was diving deep into the lore for this video and doing my research, I came across some information that had me thinking that Raish may not have been the only one responsible for the data crash. And in this video, I will break down Raish's backstory, talk about the infamous data crash, and try to explain to you cybernauts my space theory on who could have helped Raish kill the first net. Before we take off, if you like this kind of content or are just a huge cyberpunk fan like myself, then make sure to memory wipe that like button and I've really been enjoying bringing these type of videos to you all. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my cyberpunk content. Go ahead, I'm not begging you. <clears throat> right, back to the video. Raish was basically born to become a net runner. As a little tiny cyber pup, he was roaming and hacking parts of the net before the age of five. I don't know if everyone would see him as a prodigy, but I do. He was so good that even while using his real name, managed to outsmart everyone who could have been a threat. Anyone around him could tell that he was drawn to anything that had to do with cyberspace. Using his genes towards spending time tinkering and experimenting with all kinds of technology, trying everything in every interface known at the time. Believe it or not, but as a preteen, he already held down jobs writing software for different companies. And I already know what you net running ninjas are thinking. Yo Space, how can a kid, practically a 12 year old, possibly hold down any position at a business already? Well let me just say that being a genius has its perks. For him, finding a job was the easy part, yet keeping that job was a whole different story. Raish wasn't a lazy employee by any stretch of the imagination, and he damn sure didn't suck at his job. But he did have one issue though, and that was working for any company dealing in shady or corrupt business. Being the ever clever kid that he was and just such a whiz with the net, he always managed to stay a step or two ahead of being caught. Always managing to get away, he then would wipe any evidence of the crime and start over at another company, essentially having his own reset button. Eventually, he would get himself a position working for CCI Development in 2004. He only worked there for about a year, and though there isn't much information on CCI Development, they're basically another tech company similar to ITS. Within his one year there, he realized the company was actually doing legit business, so he decided that this would be the place he would create his demon and hound program series. From the 2077 game, we all pretty much know how the demons operate and what they are, though not much is mentioned to us about the hound program series, which in itself is very similar to Watchdog. Watchdog was a detection and an alert program that allowed its users to monitor any illegal entries into their system. Netrunners would use these programs to monitor parts of the net, yet Raish's Hound or Bloodhound program had one extra feature that allowed it to top its competition. The extra feature was allowing the user to practically trace where this illegal entry was originating from and then report that information back to the source. How I see it is Raish potentially invented the cyber sword and then added an extra feature to an already existing cybernetic shield. He practically invented the generic programs that allowed its user to illegally hack any system, and then turns around and increases the security capacity with his Bloodhound program, effectively making money both ways. Working for CCI was going very well up until the point where he uploaded a political video into their source code, which in return got him fired. 
as a retaliation, he would fry their computer systems, driving them into bankruptcy. Realizing he was sitting on a gold mine with his demon program, then sold the source code to a few different software companies, which made him filthy rich. And for any of you chromed out chooms that are asking how rich was Raish, in the source material, it practically says that he didn't have to work another day in his life. Man, that would be the dream. But we all know with more money can come more problems. Raish's dating life wasn't that great. Well, he tried, but his experiences didn't go so well, which after a few bad experiences had our guy feeling very opposed to any kind of physical relationships at all. Being known to screw over plenty mega corporations would then go to have a heavy hitting corpo look to erase his state identification number out of the net. The corpo who was responsible for this was none other than Spider Murphy's father. During this time, a young Spider Murphy took it upon herself to seek out and warn Raish about what her father had done. It isn't specified why she may have done this, though I speculate it could have been out of pure admiration from a potential fan of Raish Bartmoss who at this time seemingly could have been a net running phenom to the younger crowd. And when I stated earlier that I felt that there were two net runners that could be possibly at the level of Raish, let me just go ahead and clarify that there are two in my opinion. One being Spider Murphy, and the other being of course Alt Cunningham. Spider Murphy's actions did not go underappreciated by Raish and actually helped spark a great friendship between the two. Raish would eventually take Spider Murphy under his wing, teaching her everything he knew about different interfaces and running the net. Raish would then form a bit of a net running crew that included Spider Murphy and two others. With their collective skills, they practically ran figure eights around the policing organization Netwatch while also pulling off feats in the net that were thought to be impossible. Raish would go on to link up with Alt Cunningham during the earlier development stages of what would soon become known as the Pacifica Playground, which saw them both running that newly formed region of the net. I theorize that since so many corporate hands were involving themselves into the funding of Pacifica, as well as the Militech backing, these two geniuses could have been doing everything from information gathering, testing and creating new codes for corporations or themselves, all the way down to espionage for external or even personal reasons. If you're to learn anything about Raish, you will understand that this chum had a particular hatred for corporations and only saw them as the main shackles on humanity. He would go far out of his way to make them suffer at every turn. After realizing this, I started to think about how he always seemed to be a few steps ahead of everyone. This only led to every single corporation putting a target on his back. D. Bartmoss, data crash rabbit Bartmoss, guy who trashed the first net? Well, it wasn't his uncle. Yeah, yeah, him. I'd recognize that mug anywhere. Wanted posters all over town back in 2020. Public enemy number one, dead or alive. Half the city was on the hunt. During 2010, Raish would move to the edge of the combat zone, which by the events of 2077 was known as the Old Combat Zone, or Section D. Located more to the south of Night City, the edge of the combat zone was full of residential homes, yet the further south you moved in, you started to realize that there was no clear line separating from where the residential area ended and the combat zone began. This unidentified line would only prove to make things much worse for those who were still living there, as NCPD was practically useless in this lawless area. While living in the combat zone, Raish seemingly was coming up with a whole new plan. Only moving corpo workers who had neural processors into a Connap building that he took over. Basically using these corpos like his own personal hardware? Being able to control their minds and bodies whenever he saw fit after installing hidden subconscious personality programs in each and every one of them. He also used them for security and surveillance purposes while he was working on his secret project, which he managed to keep off of the grid for 10 years before it became operational in 2019. Right before this, back in 2014, the net went through a massive change as the Ihara Grub transformation algorithm was set in motion. This algorithm was created to reform the structure of the first net. The interface was set to provide an ununiform look and feel, allowing it to be rendered as an analog to the real world. 
Now, I really would like y'all to remember this because this is gonna be important and will pop up later on in this video. During this time, these algorithms were designated to operating most regions of the first net. While this reformation was happening, our Chumba decided to remain jacked in, which no one else dared to do. Witnessing this event with his own digitized eyes ended up flatlining for 10 seconds. For those who aren't used to my wild space theories, or may not dig into the lore as deep as some of us junkies do, it is totally fine to just play the game and think that Raish was solely responsible for the data crash. And if this wasn't one of my wild and crazy space theory videos, this would absolutely be true. But this is one of my videos, and that is not the case. For this space theory, and thanks to things like the lore and Raish's guide to the net, we know that there are different variants of AIs, five to be exact and they all come with different personalities and could be run in different regions of the net. The one I wanna talk about in particular is the Transcendental Sentience AI. This very unique AI was stated to have emerged out of the net processors, which were the results of the Ihara Grub transformation algorithm. This is the same algorithm that was in motion when Bart Moss was the only one plugged into the net to see what really happened. Being stuck in the net, watching it dissolve and evolve into something brand new, could have drove the man damn near crazy. And in my theory, this could have had a very profound effect on him. Now, what I'm about to say next, I personally know is an absolute wild theory and I'm practically reaching for straws here. Yet, it won't be the first time I do that in this video. But I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think an AI changed Raish's original Rapids virus and that is what destroyed the first net. What I mean by that is the original plan was supposed to cause a bit of hell in the net for most if not all mega corporations, yet I don't think it was supposed to cause as much damage as it did. This theory in my opinion is backed by what the virus originally says in the lore, which is that the Rapids virus was only supposed to breach data fortresses of all the corporations and release their data onto the net for anyone to access. For this theory, I think back to his experience first watching the formation of that new AI. I say this because though there aren't any specific dates given to us as to when he may have done this, I theorize that for at least a few years to what could have been a few months, he was spending time in the net studying and observing all these different forms of AI. And for these different categories, I'm already in the process of creating my next two videos, one of which will be where I will dive into the lore of the AIs and they will definitely be expanded upon. But for now, let's just keep it mainly on Bartmoth. And for those of you who are asking, why would an AI want to destroy the net? I think of it very similar to Agent Smith from The Matrix, whose true goal was to escape the digital realm in order to get access to the real world. I must get out of here. I must get free. Which, thanks to the cyberpunk lore, talks about how this is theoretically not possible. And we'll touch back on that point in just a bit. This theory of mine comes from learning about a specific AI personality that Raish identified and claimed to have been in contact with for an unknown period of time. This specific AI personality I'm referring to is Europa. Trust me when I say that I am very aware of how crazy this may sound to all you cybernauts out there. I just ask that you try to hang in here with me and allow me to make this make sense. For this theory, I also have to include that during this time, Alt Cunningham was simultaneously working for the mysterious ITS company, and with her fascination of the development of AI, ended up making a breakthrough in her new creation, and at this time, wasn't given a name. Its only function was the transferring and containment of intelligence, that meaning both the human mind as well as the AI mind. Knowing this, that line about them theoretically not being able to leave their digital realm becomes a bit more possible, but the company that she worked for chose to weaponize it, turning it into the Soul Killer program. And we all know how this turned out for Alt Cunningham. After only a few years since the algorithm that Race was running the net and studying these AIs, his heart would stop yet again, but this time it is stated that his body died and a digital version of himself was left living on in the net. After his death, Raish spent 10 months trying to contact Spider Murphy through the net in order to tell her what happened. 
Once this digital version actually made contact with Spider Murphy, boy did he have a lot of things to share with her. A lot of the information that was relayed helped them both finish the book that he was well known for, which was Raish's Guide to the Net. Though it was seen as a manual to help net runners, I also see some of the information that was relayed in this text as a potential warning of what was to come. In 2021, Militech, backed up by Alt Cunningham's Ingrammatic Ghost, made contact with Raish Bartmoss through the net, requesting his help in the fight against Arasaka during the Fourth Corporate War, and also needing his help getting back the Soul Killer Master program. And Bartmoss got the job done. Yet, I have to remind you, they didn't know that Bart Moss was physically dead. Digging into this idea, I couldn't help but wonder why someone who's as smart and as skilled of a netrunner as Raish, given that he's been doing this for quite some time, would have been working so diligently on an important project in such secrecy that once it's released, it mushies out and doesn't go as planned. And going back to that statement that claimed that these AIs theoretically could not leave the net. I do believe that that was true until they got their hands on this technology, as they may have their own agenda, seeing as that they are also suppressed and shackled by these mega corporations, as well as shackled by humanity's use of them. And before the infamous data crash, he would try to inform Spider Murphy that these new algorithms or the Ihara Grub algorithm created transcendental sentience in the net and that these regions of the net weren't being operated by AIs, but instead were actually the AIs themselves, trying to convince her that he got this information by making contact with them. After hearing this, Merv didn't believe that this was true at all, pointing out how most programmers as well as psychoanalysts dismissed their existence entirely, treating this information with the same skepticism and dismissive outlook as if someone were to talk about aliens or sightings of ghosts, which funny enough both exist in the cyberpunk universe in one form or another. I think back to a line that I heard years ago and it could have been a quote from a movie, but it went like this. One of the greatest things that the devil could have ever done was to convince the world that he didn't exist. I'm not saying that this AI is the devil. Everything is the devil to you, mama. Though those who suffer because of the data crash may see it differently, what I'm saying is that the best thing this AI could have done to see its plan succeed was to remain unnoticed by the masses. If anyone or corp would have found out what this thing wanted, they would have tried to pull the plug immediately. Now that we got that out the way, let's try to wrap up this crazy space theory video of mine and talk about the data crash. It is stated plenty of times in the lore that his death was the dead man switch that unleashed the rapids virus onto the net, causing the data crash. In 2022, Raish's signal was tracked somehow, which subsequently led to a corporate raid on his building. Basically, every corporation that had a target out for Raish went after his ass. During this time, a lot of different stories were told about what went down after those corporations raided his building. Everything from Raish setting up booby traps to them vaporizing his body. Yet, no matter what the story was, every corporation that was involved in this raid at the end of it all thought that they had killed the legendary Netrunner. From the lore, it states that this event could have happened on June 3rd, 2020 or in 2022. In my opinion, I don't think that June 3rd had anything to do with the virus being released. But still, I feel something else may have happened during this time outside of Raisha's death that could add a little bit more weight to my theory. The event that I am referring to is when Raish told Murphy in 2022 that the Europa AI hasn't communicated for two years, and I quote him here, suspected it to be involved in some major project like trying to escape the net or communicating with aliens or performing some ridiculously complex calculations. And this line is what helped spark the idea for this entire video. With this, let's just focus on these two points. One being that it wanted to escape the net, and the other being that it was working on ridiculously complex calculations. We already know that this AI wanted to escape the net, yet the ridiculously complex calculations, in my opinion, I feel were the real main role players in this event. These complex calculations were to figure out how to manipulate the human realm into helping this AI escape the net. And this all began with mutating the original Rapids virus. 
Thanks to information from the lore, my theory goes like this. This AI at some point decides that it wants out of the net, and I think out of one of two reasons. One, either being under its own will just because of what it is, or two, it may have made contact with an alien signal which then sparked it to want to not only transcend its world, but potentially transcend the human world as well. Raish being the first person that it makes contact with, sees him as a resource to gain access into the human realm. It is stated in the lore that something like chess to this AI is seen as very rudimentary, and though that may be the case, I feel that chess could possibly be its favorite game, because in my opinion, I feel that it is basically playing a game of chess on a global scale. And the game was most likely won before the first move was ever made, using Raish's Rapids virus and mutating it to make it cause way more damage than originally expected was one of its first moves. I will say this, we all know the virus did screw over the corporations as he originally wanted, yet it killed the net which in my opinion was his home and home to others like him which I don't feel he really wanted to destroy. And to top this off, it unleashed already very dangerous military grade AIs but we're not done yet, to up the cyber ante, went ahead and mutated them making them too OP for anyone to handle. The reason it did this is so it can make its next chess move, which involved it taking over a huge portion of the net and being able to run this undisturbed and also unmonitored. And this is what leads us to the creation of the Black Wall. This comes from rumors that emerged about Netwatch saying that the only reason they were able to even build the Black Wall was due to the help of rogue AIs who really didn't want humans to be able to see what they were up to for their own secret or opaque reasons. Still, by this time in the story, no one really knows the fate of Raish Bartmoss, if he is truly dead or if he's alive somehow. I theorize that a very powerful version of Raish is alive in the net somewhere. It probably is pulling a few strings, or it might be able to access the real world after using a copy of the source code to the Soul Killer program. And for those of you who are asking, yo Space, what about the body in the freezer? There are two different things, one being from the game and another being from the lore that I feel will help out with this. One being a note that was made by R. Tulsar in Games stating that it isn't certain if the body in the junkyard freezer belongs to Raish Bartmoss and thanks to Johnny's unreliable memory, we can't trust his confidence in identifying what Raish looks like. The other one is in the title itself. The title of the mission is called Cold Mirage. Cold, I'm thinking, really just has to do with the freezer and the mirage part has to do with this being an illusion and that isn't really Raish. Now back to the black wall, which needed to be built with the humans thinking that it was an effort to save themselves from these rogue and very dangerous AIs. Yet, in actuality was the exact opposite. This AI tricked Netwatch into building this for its own means of espionage. Being that the black wall is possibly an AI itself gives it the ability to go rogue. And I ask you all, what makes you think that it hasn't done that already? And once again, I get to leave it up to you, my rogue net running Chumba Loompas. What do y'all think? Am I absolutely crazy? Let me know what y'all feel in the comments below. And remember, to show yourself gratitude, spread love as best as you can, especially to the ones closest to you. Know that there's never a bad time to get on some Cyberpunk 2077 and kick a little ass, especially when you're upset. But know that I'm always sending you positive energy and good vibrations. And until my next video, let's take off. I'm out. Peace.